Hi, ek is Avatar Rempies, wat vandag met julle vanuit die IEEE eiland op Second Life gesels. Our topic for this presentation, Virtual Worlds, a serious corporate business tool or just another game. For the purpose of this assignment, we did some research on business applications of Virtual Worlds. We decided to follow the KISS principle on this presentation. In other words, keep it simple, stupid. A more technical document is available for those interested. You can ask any of the group members for a copy if you should feel the need to do so. This obviously excludes you, Martin. <laughs> for the purpose of this presentation, we define a virtual world as a 3D immersive environment. The main difference between virtual worlds and websites like Facebook is a 3D immersive effect, which creates a more personal, lifelike feel when people interact with one another in this virtual world. The person in the virtual world is called the avatar. What you see now is my avatar. Studies have shown that the same centers in a person's brain are activated in an immersive environment as is the case in a real life scenario. In other words, I become my avatar. Our research concluded that the two most successful business uses for virtual worlds is prototyping and training. Virtual prototyping is always known as simulation-based design. It refers to an iterative design refinement of a product using a computer-based physical simulation. The term prototyping can be divided into two types, product and business process management. Remote collaboration is facilitated by embedding the prototype in a virtual world such as Second Life which allows for real-life immersive collaboration between key personnel and the environment as programmed. The virtual world environment created for this prototype creates an environment where key personnel can evaluate the prototype and communicate with one another while evaluating the prototype. The prototype can also be tested in a virtual environment to simulate real-life performance if the environment is programmed to do this. Virtual world training means training in a virtual immersive environment. The training facilitator and trainees can interact with one another in this environment with the advantage of a real life feel versus watching a training video. One of the advantages of this is that you can be present without physically being present. Globally dispersed members of a group can interact and undergo training at the same time without the need to fly anywhere. Obviously, this also saves money. Another advantage is safety training to handle dangerous situations like disarming a bomb that can be made very realistic in a virtual world and the interactive environment can create the feel of being there, fearing that you might snip the wrong wire or dropping the bomb or having your colleague bump into you while performing this task. Environmental effects which are difficult to simulate or even repeat in real life can be simulated in the virtual world and repeated if necessary. A volcano or a tsunami that breaks out is a good example of this. Now, what happened since the technology became available? To have a better look at this, we can use Gartner's hype cycle. According to Gartner, there are three phases in the adoption cycle of new technology. The first phase starts with a technology trigger. This is when the technology become available. In the case of virtual worlds, this was around 2003. Next comes a peak of inflated expectations. The technology is adopted with high expectation of success. In 2006, the popularity of virtual worlds peaked. Then followed the trough of disillusionment when they found out that their expectations will not be met. This happened early in 2008. According to Gartner, 90% of business ventures into virtual worlds failed within 18 months. This was partly due to software issues like lag times, avatars crashing into furniture, stuff disappearing from time to time, which resulted in users getting frustrated. Then follows the slope of enlightenment when the companies enter with lower expectations and a more conservative approach. At this stage, many of the problems associated with the technology were addressed and enough knowledge is available to aid in the decision-making process. Research indicates that using virtual worlds for niche applications like training and prototyping is already very effective. 
even though the technology is still in its infancy. Then we reach a productive stage where the technology really starts to pay off for companies that implement the technology. The main reason for failure was relatively low entry barriers, causing businesses to experiment with the technology without giving it much thought. Businesses also got caught up in the hype of this new technology, forcing applications without really having use for these applications. As mentioned previously, the software is still relatively new and many software issues still exist. Human interface is another issue. Controlling a person with a mouse, joystick or keyboard can be difficult and make some of the immersive exercises less real, limiting the application of the technology. A recipe for success. Focus goals and proper training in the use of the technology plays a vital role in the success of virtual training and prototyping. Without these, the immersive interactive experience will be lost completely. Companies like IBM invested in research and development to develop their virtual facilities for conferencing. Experts in the field were appointed to create virtual environments that is realistic, properly designed and tested and meets IBM's requirements. Pro proper training in the use of virtual worlds also helped to ensure success. Another important success factor is return on investment. Sufficient savings to justify investment is necessary to invest in a project like this. A pre-existing problem needs to exist. A company looking for application will inevitably just end up with a toy with very little relevance to the business. Development strategy and goal setting need to be clearly defined to guide the venture into virtual worlds. These must come from top management to ensure success. Adopting virtual world technology comes with some risk for current players. Security of company data and information as well as intellectual property can be compromised. Many users use a third-party server for their virtual environment. Heavy investment in technology that run on third-party databases or code bases can be lost should the service provider go bankrupt. Misconduct of employees in virtual world or mismanagement of the virtual environment itself can damage brand image. To put things into perspective, this graph illustrates how far the biggest virtual world, Second Life, is from mass adoption when compared to Facebook. Future Growth More recently, leading companies who have successfully integrated virtual world technology into their businesses researched the use of 3D virtual world games and their possible use in business. IBM pioneered this research, which led to the Geo Gaming Report. The report is a result of investigations into the leadership effects games like World of Warcraft have on the next generation of leaders. The research led to the creation of IBM's Innovate platform. As Second Life started to lose its appeal, some other virtual worlds popped up, catering for the younger generation. Early exposure of the younger generation to virtual worlds will ensure the next generation of our workforce will be well versed with the use of such technology. This will nullify most of the concern about usability. They might even prefer to communicate via virtual media. There is no doubt that hardware for human interface will be developed in future, making virtual worlds even more appealing for business. Who knows where the virtual world experience will take us next? In conclusion, consider the following video clip.